The 5th of March, 1904. Serbian scientist Nikola Tesla publishes a paper in New York on the formation and nature of ball lightning. He was even able to artificially induce this phenomenon in his laboratory, apparently as a byproduct of his experiments. He thus confirmed several of his nicknames. The Lord of Lightning. The Electric Magician. The one who invented the entire 20th century. Tesla was simply a genius who churned out one invention after another, from remote control to the X-ray, to a weapon called the Death Ray, but never succeeded in making a fortune. Yet today, he is one of the most important and also one of the most enigmatic scientists in history. Nikola Tesla was born to Serbian parents in 1856 in the village of Smiljan, then in the territory of the Austrian Empire. Today, the village is part of Croatia, so the famous scientist is appropriated by both Serbs and Croats. It is said that little Nikola was born in a storm. From an early age, he had an affinity for a new phenomenon, electricity. For example, when he first saw a picture of Niagara Falls, he immediately imagined how he could use the huge stream of water to generate electricity. His student years were not easy. First he studied Polytechnic in Graz, where he ended up after quarrels with his teachers. Then he spent a semester in Prague at Charles University. However, he left Prague due to lack of money. So he started working in Budapest as an ordinary electrical engineer without having completed any university education. That's when chance plays a role. The head of his Budapest laboratory gets an offer to work in the Paris branch of a company owned by the famous Edison and he takes young Tesla with him. From Paris, at 28, he moves straight to New York, to Edison's Manhattan headquarters. Thomas Alva Edison, who five years earlier had changed the world with the invention of the light bulb, is now trying to electrify cities using direct current. But Nikola is a fan of alternating current, so it's clear these two won't last long together. After two years, Tesla leaves Edison, allegedly because of unpaid bonuses. When he convinces a few investors with a spectacular experiment in which he uses alternating current to spin an iron egg so that it stands on its tip, he starts his own company, Tesla Electric Company. A 30-year-old Tesla grabs the opportunity and works very hard. He never marries because, he says, there aren't many famous inventions made by married men. By nature, he only needs two hours of sleep a day so every workday will end at 3 a.m. in the field of alternating current, he immediately starts patenting one invention after another. The most famous is the asynchronous induction motor, which in various modifications becomes the most widely used electric motor ever. This success attracts the attention of Edison's biggest competitor, George Westinghouse, who buys all the patents from him and teams up with Tesla. Together, they kick off what would later be called the War of the Currents. It's a dirty game with a lot of money and the future of electrification at stake. Edison argues that the alternating current Westinghouse and Tesla can transmit using high voltage is lethal and therefore unsuitable for homes. And he proves it in his own way. Demonstratively killing stray dogs, horses and even an elephant. Things come to a head when he suggests that alternating current should replace the noose in executions, which he derisively calls Westinghousing. But the economic advantage of alternating current which can be transmitted over much greater distances by means of high voltage, is clear. When Westinghouse and Tesla majestically light up the Chicago World's Fair in 1893, and three years later win the competition to design a power station connected to Niagara Falls, not only is Tesla's childhood dream fulfilled, but the entire war of the currents is definitely decided in favor of alternating current. At this point, you'd expect Nikola Tesla to become a millionaire. But his business sense is minimal. He just doesn't care about money. He'd rather churn out hundreds of other ideas, most of which he abandons, some of which he doesn't even publish. For example, he experimented with X-rays before the German scientist Röntgen himself. He develops the first apparatus for transmitting signals by radio waves 
before the Italian scientist Marconi. He demonstrates the first wireless remote control machine. He launches a boat, which he controls with electric waves. He's not getting much out of this. The big money goes to others. He says, it doesn't bother me that they steal my ideas. It's that they don't have any of their own. His obsession would eventually become the exploration of wireless power transmission. He intends to build a worldwide system whereby energy can be freely transmitted without the need for a distribution network. Any light bulb could be turned on without a power cord, and machines could be controlled remotely, including electric cars, for example. Electricity would be everywhere and ideally free. He needs a large space to experiment, so in 1899 he moves from New York to the wild west town of Colorado Springs. Here he builds a laboratory where, among other things, he induces artificial lightning, which is also a kind of wireless transmission of electricity. He also takes these famous photographs of himself in the midst of the tremendous discharges. In reality, it is a double exposure. Tesla was sitting between turned off instruments when he took the picture. Eventually, he manages to produce lightning bolts up to 40 meters. However, his attempts blow fuses in the town, horseshoes in the vicinity get sparkling, and the only result is that he manages to wirelessly light a light bulb at a distance of only 30 meters. The neighborhood is pissed at him, and because it is discovered that he doesn't pay rent at all, he has to move back to New York after only a year. But he won't give up here either. On the contrary, he realizes that wireless power transmission requires an even more powerful source. He manages to convince industrialist J.P. Morgan to invest $150,000 to build a monster called the Wardenclyffe Tower. He says the 57-meter transmitter will be the first in the world to send a radio signal across the Atlantic. In reality, he has no such plans. He continues to research his power transmission to no avail. Then a year later, when the Italian Marconi famously transmits the letter S across the Atlantic with a cheaper Morse code transmitter, Morgan runs out of patience and cuts off all payments to Tesla. Although he claims that Marconi is using 17 of his patents, he must abandon his tower and sell it to pay off his debts. From now on, Tesla will not avoid the label of a genius, but somewhat phantasmagoric inventor, fakir and weirdo. He's over 50, his lucrative patents have expired, and Tesla's trajectory is heading downward. In 1909, Marconi wins the Nobel Prize for inventing the wireless telegraph, which makes Tesla furious. He sues Marconi, but the lawsuits drag on for another 35 years. In the meantime, he's living in hotels which he never pays for. He suffers from obsessive-compulsive disorder, for example. All the acts he does must be divisible by three. He has a panic fear of germs, women's earrings or peaches. His best friends are pigeons. He even claims to love one the way a man loves a woman. The final flourish would come in 1931, when journalists threw a party to celebrate his 75th birthday, and Tesla was congratulated by the greatest minds of the day, including Albert Einstein. Tesla appears on the cover of Time magazine, and then presents the world with new ideas he's working on, always on his birthday. In 1934, on his 78th birthday, he reacts to the rise of Nazism in Germany. He introduces a machine he calls the Teleforce, but the press immediately renames it the Death Ray. It's supposed to be a burst of light that will destroy the enemy's entire air force at a distance of 300 kilometers. The idea will be pitched to Britain, the United States, the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. But in the end, not a single prototype is built and it all fizzles out. Old Nikola returns to his pigeons and eventually dies of a heart attack in his New York hotel room in January 1943. He's 87 years old. Two things about his departure are telling. He lies dead in his room for at least three days before anyone notices his absence. And two, his entire estate, 80 suitcases of notes, sketches and patents, is seized and examined by the FBI for years. Genius, crazy, dangerous, or maybe all of the above. This was the man who, without a university degree, helped to invent the world we live in today.